some fascinating studies about the role of sunlight exposure on metabolic health. Can you talk about a couple of those? There's three really interesting human studies here. Uh, I'll start with the first one. This is a study uh, by Dr. Glenn Jeffrey out of the University of College of London. Uh, and, and what he did was a really fascinating study. It was a randomized uh, placebo control trial, uh, one of the best studies you can do. What he did was he isolated a specific wavelength of light, 670 nanometers, which falls underneath the red uh, light spectrum. So it's red light. He shined red light on the backs of participants, of healthy adults. Uh, and he had two groups, right? So he had one group where he shined the red light and one group again where he did not shine the red light. So they were the control group. The group that got the red light shined on their back, and it was a very small portion of their back. So it's about this, it was about this big for people who were listening. It was about like 10% of their total body surface area. He shined the red light on their back for just 15 minutes. And what he found, and this was this was this was before glucose consumption. So he shined the red light, then he had the participants drink glucose. So it's just straight glucose, not something people want to do. It's one, it probably tastes terrible, but also not healthy. Don't do that. Uh, but what he did, he, he had these people drink glucose after the red light exposure. And then for the next two hours, he monitored their blood glucose levels. And what he showed was that those who got the red light had a reduction in total glucose and a reduction in the spike. So there was a dampened spike and a reduced total amount of blood glucose that was circulating in the bloodstream, simply from 15 minutes of red light on a small portion of the back. And the mechanism here uh, that he further uh, studied was increased, uh, increased uh, metabolic function and increased uh, metabolism. So your, their, their mitochondria were, were working harder and were using that glucose that the people were consuming. And the way they found this was he also looked at carbon dioxide output. So when our mitochondria produce ATP, they also produce carbon dioxide. So we breathe in oxygen, right? Our mitochondria use that oxygen to allow the electrons in the electron transfer chain to funnel through the electron transfer chain, eventually get to oxygen, form water, our mitochondria actually produce water, and then we breathe out carbon dioxide. That is all because of our mitochondria. And he saw that the people who also got the red light shine on their back also had increased carbon dioxide output, furthering the sort of mechanism at play here, which was increased uh, mitochondrial function. And their mitochondria were making ATP faster and were able to function more properly. So that's the first study on metabolic health. There was another study uh, with... Uh, older woman in their 40s, uh, and actually I believe it was both it was both men and women in their 40s, and what they actually did was they actually brought these people outside, and they had them, uh, they had them lay in the sun and sunbathe. So it was from 9 a.m. to 9, 10 a.m., so 10 minutes of sun exposure, and I have actually reached out to the authors of the study, and it was actually only recently within the past couple of weeks, so during the holiday time, they haven't reached back out to me, but I'm hoping I get a response soon. Uh, what was interesting from what I gauged from how they described it in the study, only their face and their hands were exposed to light. So presumably they probably had a t-shirt on and pants on, uh, or sorry, a long sleeve shirt on and pants on, and their hands and their face were were exposed to light. And uh, what they what they showed was they they basically tested glucose. They they did ten minutes of the sunlight exposure for seven days. They tested the they, and they also had a control group. So they had people who didn't get the sun, and people who got the sun. They showed that uh, on the fir the first day compared to the seventh day, blood glucose levels dropped roughly around 30%, which is also a very similar stat to what we saw in the Glenn Jeffrey study. It, it was a 27.7% reduction in uh, blood glucose levels with the red light shining on the subject's back. Uh, and we saw a very similar around 30% reduction from simply being outside for 10 minutes in the morning uh, and getting hands and face exposed. The authors of the study attributed these effects to vitamin D production, uh, because we do know uh, pretty pretty clearly that vitamin D is uh, able to interact with um, our circulating blood glucose and it has an effect on our blood glucose. But my takeaway from this study, um, and again, this is why I reached out to the authors. I have a few questions with it. Um, but I actually think that 
more than likely, it was probably the red and infrared light that was doing most of the most of the work here in terms of lowering that blood glucose level. Uh, you know, they didn't test vitamin D levels. So if they tested vitamin D levels, and if we saw an increase in vitamin D levels, then maybe we can come up with a with that conclusion being confirmed. But we don't. Um, but ne 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 nevertheless, very interesting study there. So lowering blood glucose levels from short amount of time being exposed to sunlight. And then another study that just came out, what, like less than two weeks ago now um, from the time we're recording this podcast. It was published in Cell Metabolism, one of the leading uh, scientific journals. And before I actually get into the study, I want to give a little bit of background of evidence that we have outside of this study that they actually highlight in the study. Uh, and so first off, when we look at older men uh, with insulin resistance, meaning that their uh, body is not responding to insulin properly, right? When we look at those, those individuals, we see that, uh, that their, um, their muscle cells, so their peripheral clocks and their muscle cells. So we have our central circadian uh, timekeeper, our central circadian clock, and we also have peripheral clocks. So we have peripheral clocks in our, in our muscles. We have peripheral clocks in, our, in pretty much all of our organs, right? The peripheral clock in the muscle cells of these individuals are not able to synchronize properly. There's an altered 24 hour rhythmicity in these muscle cells. There's also a lack of rhythmicity of circadian alignment in their mitochondrial metabolism. We see those two same outcomes with, uh, type, with individuals who have type two diabetes. We take basically muscle cells from them with individual type two diabetes. We culture those muscle cells and we look at the circadian sort of um, clock of these muscle cells. Same, same outcomes, a altered rhythmicity and a lack of rhythmicity within these cells. So that's one. When we look at epidemiological studies, right? So observational studies, again, observational studies cannot prove causation, but we can get strong correlations with them. We see that shift workers, so when we look at shift work epidemiology, shift workers, people who live or people who are working under artificial light at night, which is basically messing with their circadian system, it's putting their circadian rhythm out of line, we see that they they tend to have a lot more metabolic disorders. So this includes things like diabetes, insulin resistance, things like that, right? They have more metabolic disorders, correlation. However, when we have controlled lab shift work, so when we, when we simulate shift work in a lab, in a controlled lab environment, we look at biomarkers for these individuals and we see these same negative outcomes that sort of point us to metabolic disorder. So we have that correlation with the shift work and we have now this controlled lab experiment showing the same thing. And then another piece of evidence that they highlight in this new paper that we're about to discuss, when we look at the pancreas of type two diabetics, and we can look at the islets, islets in a pancreas are basically, um, you can think of them as these sort of like pockets where things like insulin gets secreted. Uh, and we look at these islets, the islets again, they have a circadian rhythm to them. When we look at the islets of type two diabetics, the pancreas, right? When we look at the islets of the type two diabetics, we see a uh, decrease in the amplitude of circadian clock genes. So we have these clock genes, which are circadian in nature. So they get expressed at certain times of the day and they, they get suppressed at other times of the day. And we see a reduced amplitude. So that, um, that tells us that there is something wrong from a circadian perspective happening in those islets in the pancreas. We also see a reduced um, capacity to synchronize the, the circadian clock of these islets. And what's really fascinating is that if we add in a synthetic molecule to these islets that basically um, modulate the circadian system and reinforce the circadian system synthetically, right, we can actually see an increase in insulin secretion. So an improvement in insulin secretion. And, you know, that's a synthetic improvement. We're improving it synthetically. But how does, how do we, how do we, reinforce the circadian clock naturally in our lives where we get out in sunlight and we synchronize our clock with the natural rhythm of the light, of, of sunlight. And so those are really three interesting pieces of evidence that they point in the study. And now we have this brand new study out that looks at humans in a uh, controlled lab. What they did basically was they had people, there were, there was 13 participants, so small sample size, but nevertheless, a really really fascinating study and it should at the very least prompt us to question and to ask, hey, we need more research on this and we do. And 13 participants, 
what they did was the participants were working in a artificially lit environment. So a workplace. So they had their desk and then they had LEDs and they have fluorescent light bulbs, just LEDs and fluorescents, no windows in a room, just LEDs and fluorescents at normal lighting levels as you would in like a work, uh, work office. And in the paper, they, they show a picture of their work environment and you can see just artificially lit light. So they were in that artificially lit environment for four and a half days. Then there was sort of a lockout phase where they, um, for I, I leave it was like two weeks where they went back to their daily lives and then they came back to the lab, same participants, and they worked in a different environment. And this environment was same, you know, table, chair, their work environment, but there was a window on the side of them and a window in front of them, a full window being exposed to the variations of light that are happening from sunlight. Again, four and a half days in that environment. Everything else was controlled. So this is really important. And this is why the study is really, really well done is that they controlled everything else. So the food that these people ate, they controlled. The light that they were exposed to outside of the lab. So for instance, there was no like bathroom in the lab. So if they had to go use the bathroom, they had, they put on red blue light blocking glasses to block those shorter wavelengths of light getting into the eye. And so they had all these, all these other factors controlled. The only difference was where they were basically where they were sitting, right? If they were sitting in artificially lit or in front of a window. And what they showed was that when the participants sat in front of the window, they had an improvement in, or they had an increase in the normal glucose uh, range. So these participants were in normal glucose range. So what that means is basically their glucose, right, was in where, sort of where we want it, right? It was, it, was, it was in for where we want it for longer periods of time than compared to when they were in the artificially lit environment. They also saw that there was a lower 24 hour um, glucose variability. So the variability in glucose fluctuations, right? There is a their decrease in that, which is what we want, right? That is, that is a sign of healthier metabolic um, health. And then the participants, when they were exposed, when they were in front of the, the window, uh, increased whole body fat oxidation. So they were utilizing fat more than they were carbohydrates which is another sign of healthier metabolic uh, function. And so we have all these different outcomes. Um, there was, you know, they also showed similarly that the people that were working in front of the windows also had higher levels of melatonin at, at night, sub, uh, sorry, pineal melatonin. So the melatonin that makes you fall asleep, so, which, is, which just confirms what we already know. We know that if you get more sunlight during the day and in the morning, you have higher peaks of melatonin at night, which is what you want. They also looked at um, the peripheral circadian clock of their muscle cells. So they actually took, they took muscle biopsies. Basically what that means is they carved out a piece of these people's muscles. Um, and they looked at, um, the, you know, the circadian rhythm of these muscles. Uh, and they also showed improvement in that. And so, uh, clearly this was, a, this was circadian in nature. So the other two studies that we we're looking at was simply adding red light or sunlight to the body improves glucose metabolism and, and glucose levels. But this seemed to be um, circadian in nature. So they were aligning their circadian system and they were having improved metabolic function. Now, a hypothesis that I have from this study as well is not only do I think the aligning their circadian rhythm helped, which definitely did, obviously, but also through the window, again, they were getting more red light and they actually show, they, they showed, um, they use a spectrometer which is basically a device that reads the spectrum of light coming from a device. Uh, they use a spectrometer of the, and they, and they, they tested the, the artificially lit environment and then they tested the window environment. And you can see in the, in the study that the window environment did have way more red light than the artificially lit environment. The artificially lit environment was very um, concentrated in the short blue wavelengths of light, which is typical from LEDs and fluorescent light bulbs. But these uh, participants that were in under the window, they were getting exposed to more red and infrared light, which could have helped, uh, could have helped their mitochondria, could have helped their metabolic um, function that way. So, three really interesting human studies that all point to sunlight. You know, sunlight, which is abundant in infrared and red light. You know, and red light. So, if you want, you know, like you said, there is a time and place for red light therapy, isolated red light. I encourage people to opt for a red incandescent light bulb because that's very broad band. Red light therapy uses very short wavelength or very, um, sorry, very narrow band red light, which 
is great because, I mean, that's what they are using in these studies and they're showing benefits. So no doubt there are going to be benefits from that. But like Glenn Jeffrey has even showed that when you're using an incandescent light bulb, which is very broadband, so a lot of red, a lot of infrared, you're getting even better benefits. So again, these, these studies are all pointing to sunlight and light affects our metabolic health. And we, have, we are living in an environment that is lacking these wavelengths of light and lacking natural sunlight uh, that is affecting our metabolic health and not uh, for a good, not in the good, not in a good direction, right? In a poor direction. And we are, we're seeing these consequences. People are, we have, like you said, more pre diabetes, more pre-diabetes and um, di- diabetes just in general is, is that an all time high. So light clearly affects your metabolic health. And that is something that people, people need to realize. YouTube, if you enjoyed what you just saw, keep watching for more great content on how to improve your brain and your life. If you're exposed to natural light and longer wavelengths light, that glucose spike is not going to be as high and you're going to have improvements in your blood glucose.